A LaTeX environment is a wrapper around a certain part of your code that defines how the contents of that code should behave. Every time you see begin and end, you are looking at an environment. For example, if we have text inside of a center environment, the output document has that text centered. Or if we have information inside of a tabular environment, then we get a table. Technically, the document itself is an environment, as it has begin document at the top and end document at the end. The begin command for an environment loads code that defines the behavior of the environment. When we put begin document into our code, we are telling it to process all of the basic document information, such as page layout and font size, based on the specific document class and any other packages that we're using. When we use begin tabular, we're adding in extra commands for how to calculate the size of the rows and columns, and how it should draw the various lines that are inside the table. The end command tells LaTeX that you're done with the environment. When you end an environment, you end everything inside of it. This means you need to make sure you create a nested structure so that all of your environments are ended in the order in which you created them. In fact, if you fail to do this, LaTeX will give you an error complaining about the mismatch of your begin and end commands. Here's a list of some of the environments we have already worked with. It turns out that the math modes are also environments. The two standard math modes are the math and display math environments. The delimiters that we use are just shortcut commands to replace the begin and end commands. We will add a few more standard environments to our collection. The first couple are the itemize and enumerate environments. Both of these are environments that create indented lists. The itemize command creates unnumbered lists, whereas the enumerate command creates numbered lists. Each new item in the list must be preceded by item. With the itemize environment, you can manually replace the marker at the left by including an optional argument after item. For example, you can replace the bullet with a right arrow. If you put in an empty set of brackets, you'll just get the indentation with no symbol at all. All of these symbols are right justified so that it'll push extra characters to the left. The same thing works with the enumerate environment. However, this will disrupt the counting feature, which can potentially cause a misalignment of your labels. There are ways to customize these lists using the enum item package. At each level, you can define exactly how you want the labels to look. You can use capital or lowercase Roman numerals, capital or lowercase alphabetical labels, or Arabic numerals as labels. Plus, you can add any type of adornment you want, such as parentheses. These four examples will give you a good sense of how to do this. This package will also let you adjust various aspects of the spacing, but you will have to read through the documentation on that. Another important environment for math students is the theorem environment. A theorem environment is actually a general name for many types of theorem-like environments. If you look at any standard upper division math textbook, you will see that definitions, theorems, lemmas, examples, propositions, and other things all have a very consistent look to them. They are also usually numbered in a specific way. All of these behaviors are controlled by the theorem environments. We will use the AMS theorem package because it makes things relatively simple. If we wanted to start having automatically numbered theorems, we would just add new theorem into the preamble. The first brackets define the name of the environment, and second brackets show what will be displayed. To create a theorem, we will just put the theorem statement in between a begin theorem and end theorem. Then every time we want to add another theorem, we would do the same thing again. If we wanted to have a lemma environment, we could create one in a similar manner. The difficulty with this is that it leads to awkward numbering. The reason is that unless we tell LaTeX otherwise, each new theorem environment will have its own counter. If we wanted them to share a counter, we would have to indicate this when we create the lemma environment. We can have many different types of environments using the same counter. There are ways to have your theorems numbered by section or subsection if you are creating a larger document, but since we haven't discussed sections and subsections yet in this series, I'm going to pass on explaining those parameters. You can find more information in section 3 of the documentation. If we wanted to create a theorem but not have it numbered, we would use the new theorem star command. This is sometimes done with name theorems. For example, it may be more useful to talk about the Pythagorean theorem than it is to talk about a theorem with an arbitrary number on it. If you wanted to have both a number and the name, you can add in an optional statement at the start of the theorem environment. The AMS theorem package has three theorem styles. The plain theorem style has a bolded name and number, and uses italicized font for the text. The definition theorem style has a bolded name and number, but uses a regular font for the text. The remark theorem style has an italicized name, a normal number, and regular font for the text. The reason they are named this way is that these are the common ways they are applied. You can create your own theorem styles, but you'll have to read the documentation for that one on your own. The AMS theorem package also has a proof environment. You don't need to define it, and it's used like all the other environments. This environment declares that you are making a proof at the start, and puts a square box at the end of the proof, flush against the right margin. 
If you wanted to change that symbol, you would have to redefine the QED symbol command. And you can define this to be basically anything you want it to be. LaTeX will figure out whether it can fit at the end of the current line or if it needs to exist on its own line. You can go one step further and define your own environments. All you need for an environment is the name of the environment, LaTeX code to run at the start of it, and LaTeX code to run at the end of it. Here's an example that mimics an unnumbered theorem environment. In this case, the second and third sets of brackets were each placed on their own line for readability. This environment is called just like all the other environments. And this can also give you a bit of insight as to what's happening in most environments. We can accomplish the same result by simply typing in the code directly and not using environments at all. The environment is just a fancy shortcut. I think you could go for quite a long time without needing to create environments, so I consider this a somewhat advanced topic. The purpose of this example is just to give you a flavor of what environments are actually doing. Most of the environments that you will end up using will likely come from pre-existing packages. And as long as you read the documentation and keep everything properly nested, you should be able to navigate them pretty well.